So we're carrying on looking at the signs and symptoms of anemia. And we've just looked at the signs and symptoms generated by the underlying cause of anemia. But in this section, we want to look at the signs and symptoms caused by the anemia itself. And to do this, I want to divide it into two categories. The first one is the clinical features caused by the hypoxia. And the second one is the clinical features caused by the hypoxemia. Now, what do we mean here? Well, hypoxemia is a deficiency of oxygen in the blood. Not enough oxygen in the blood. The emia part is in the blood. And in American spelling, they don't have that A, they just have the E. So that's deficiency of oxygen in the blood. Hypoxia is defined as deficiency of oxygen at the level of the tissues, actually in the tissues themselves. So I want to start off with this one, with, with hypoxia. Deficiency of oxygen in the tissues themselves. Now, one metabolically demanding tissue, of course, is muscle. The skeletal muscles require lots of oxygen to function properly. They're very energy, energy demanding and they contain a lot of mitochondria in the muscle cells. So if there's hypoxia in the muscle, there's not enough oxygen in the muscles. And this is going to lead to muscle fatigue and muscle weakness. And people with anemia often complain of muscle weakness and muscle fatigue. So these are the actual clinical features that we can recognise. The, well, these are symptoms really. The patient will complain of fatigue and complain of weakness when the anemia is, is more severe. Now, another tissue that becomes hypoxic is the nervous system. And again, the nervous system is a very uh, energy, um, uses a lot of energy. It's a very uh, high metabolic demand in the nervous system, both in the central nervous system and in the peripheral nervous system. So how will the hypoxemia, or sorry, well, how will the hypoxia caused by the anemia affect the nervous system? Relatively hypoxic nervous system. Well, we can divide the nervous system, of course, into the central nervous system. And the other one is the peripheral nervous system. Now, in the central nervous system, anemia is associated with reduced cognition. Cognition is thinking, especially in children. You can't think clearly in, in, very, in severe anemia. Uh, cognition is affected because of course cognition is a product of the activity of the central nervous system the thinking and because there's not enough oxygen getting to the brain that can lead to uh, fainting the patient feels faint and can can pass out uh, the correct word for that is syncope fainting um, again, short of fainting, there can be dizziness. A person can feel dizzy because there's not enough oxygen getting to the brain to generate normal brain activity. Um, another one is uh, insomnia. People have difficulty sleeping if they're anemic. And of course, there can be a headache. Now, what actually happens is <coughs> if there's not enough blood getting to the brain, if there's a relative cerebral hypoxia, in order to try and compensate for that, the blood vessels to the brain and the blood vessels in the cranial cavity will, will dilate to let more blood through. And as they let more blood through, 
it's a compensatory mechanism, more oxygen will get through as well. So that's good, but the vasodilation uh, seems to increase the pressure in the cranial cavity and that seems to be what causes the headache. It's a vascular induced headache caused by the hypoxia induced vasodilation. The peripheral nervous system, um, patients can complain of tingling in the extremities. hands and feet particularly as the peripheral nerves are, are, are somewhat hypoxic. So again we can identify the clinical features here. Um, reduced cognition, fainting, syncope, dizziness, insomnia, headache, tingling extremities. But this is kind of why we get these things. Now another feature of the hypoxia is um, other conditions can be exacerbated exacerbated there can be exacerbation and exacerbated means to make worse and there's exacerbated ischemia or ischemic conditions. So if there's not enough blood getting through to an area of the body anyway, probably because there's an arterial disease such as uh, atherosclerosis, if there's a reduced volume of blood anyway, if that blood getting through is not carrying as much oxygen, then it's going to exacerbate the hypoxia in the ischemic tissue. And particularly if there's any underlying angina, or claudication these are made worse so angina is the pain caused by myocardial ischemia usually caused by atherosclerosis of the coronary arteries and if the myocardium is hypoxic then the metabolism can change from aerobic to anaerobic and it's the same with claudication, which I'll explain in a minute. So basically the metabolism in these ischemic hypoxic tissues changes from aerobic to anaerobic. Aerobic means there is metabolism in the presence of oxygen. Anaerobic means that there's metabolism in the absence of oxygen. And if there's anaerobic metabolism, that leads to the production of lactic acid. And it's the presence of lactic acid in the tissues which causes the pain. So we can get lactic acid in the myocardium causing the pain called angina, angina pectoris. And claudication means uh, intermittent limping as a result of ischemia and hypoxia of the leg muscles. This is one of these curious terms in medicine. It's named after an old Roman emperor who apparently used to limp called Claudius. And the, the name's just stuck, claudication. But what claudication is, is ischemia and hypoxia of the leg muscles. And typically what happens is the patient starts walking. As they walk, their leg muscles are using energy. The metabolism changes from aerobic to anaerobic. That causes the production of lactic acid. So they limp and then stop and then after a period of time recover and can carry on. And it's the same with stable angina that, that the pain should pass off at rest as the limited blood supply and the limited oxygen supply is able to, uh, to catch up with the metabolic demands of the myocardium. But in severe anemia these can be uh, severely exacerbated. So the clinical features there are the increased angina and the increased claudication. So there we have some of the clinical features caused by hypoxia in the tissues.
As you probably gathered, these videos are for people that want to understand what's going on. You can get a simple list from any internet site. But these videos are aimed at increasing understanding. So that's the hypoxia area looked at. Next we want to look at the clinical features caused by hypoxemia. This will be the next mind map we want to develop.